Well, good day and welcome to the back of the van for the next episode of the van videos. This time we're talking about the camping trip, which we finally got to go on in this temporary setup. So randomly, we went to Lake Burrumbeet Caravan Park and we had an unpowered site, which I thought would be okay because I had a few gadgets. Now, this is not a gadget review channel, but I'll just show you very quickly what I've got. So two different battery packs. This one, the Vrova, I think it's a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. It is USB chargeable and rechargeable. It has plugs uh, for in and out, which the in is to charge the battery pack itself. The out is to charge whatever you like, as well as the USB out. And the second piece of kit that I had was this one. The It's called a PowerTech Plus. It is an 8,000 milliamp hour battery pack. Looks exactly like a phone, as you can see. So be careful leaving it on your dash because I got some strange looks when I left it there but it is solar powered as well. Now, granted, it will take 62 and a half hours to charge from flat to full, but if you're going hiking or you're going off-grid camping and you want to charge your phone up or keep your phone charged, there's an option. Another thing you'll notice in this video is a fly screen. Now, I'm gonna do a separate dedicated video on fly screens in the future, so stay tuned for that one, but you will see that we've got one here on the sliding door only at the moment. More to come on that. Now, Lake Burrumbeet is a really cool campsite. It's all on a sloping hill down towards the lake and the sun sets right over the top of the lake, which looked awesome on the website and indeed in real life, as you'll see in a second. Now, whilst I am in the back of the van today, you won't have to deal with my mug for much longer because I'm gonna be talking over the B-roll that I shot at the campsite. Roll it, Jimmy. There is no Jimmy. Now, Lake Burrumbeet is only about an hour out of Melbourne towards Ballarat. So really nice, pleasant drive, 110 kilometers per hour most of the way. The van sat amazingly well on the road. I have to say it was the most relaxing drive I think I've ever done in any vehicle. And I may be a little bit biased, probably am, but really this thing drove like an absolute dream. I have to say I was hugely impressed with the fuel economy of this van. Even with all our stuff in it, it did 1200 kilometers on a single tank. Now the tank is 80 litres, so it's a big tank and it costs a lot to refill, but over a thousand kilometres easily, I think, for every single tank that you get, wow. Now when we arrived, we had four campsites booked out for the four families that were going to be staying all together, and we had an amazing and uninterrupted view of the lake. And I think the way that the caravan park is sorted out with unpowered and powered sites all being on this sort of rolling hill, it means that you kind of have a view no matter where you camp, which is pretty amazing. In terms of facilities, the caravan park is relatively basic. It has bore water, so you can't drink directly out of the tap. Shower and toilet facilities are as generic as you could possibly imagine. And there is a bit of a tuck shop sort of at the front where you can get your essentials and a litre of milk or some Tim Tams or whatever you happen to run out of or if you forget to prepare. There's also a very small playground and a reasonably sized pool, but I imagine in uh, very busy times it would be fairly crowded. So here's the van and the tent in the wild, if you want. It uh, did an amazing job. It was super easy to set up. As I alluded to in my tent video, it was very forgiving. And uh, even after driving away and coming back to the tent, I had a look at the reversing camera and roughly where the tent poles were before we drove away and just matched that up when we came back. And it was very, very easy to get back into position and open the airlock back up again. So even though we had the fly screen on the sliding door and originally we thought we were gonna have the sliding door open for some cross breeze, we didn't actually need it because we had the hatch open. But we still wanted to make it a bit darker and a bit more private for us to be able to sleep. So we actually just got a curtain from Spotlight. I'm gonna grab it. So this is a really basic curtain that's 
obviously designed to go on a curtain rod and for the curtain rod to then hang over the window itself. But because of the ring hooks, it was actually really easy to hang them on the coat hooks on either side of the driver and passenger seats. And then drape the curtain over the front seats, which kind of created a little bit of a cocoon, still with a bit of light coming through over the top, but for about 50 bucks, created an excellent solution for privacy in the back of the van while we slept. Um, this one is, I think, 120 centimeters wide, and it was just exactly the right width to put this second hook up there, and the third one over here. Another low budget, but awesome solution for privacy, if you like, in your own van. And of course, if you're just transporting cargo and want to hide what that is, do the same thing, have it sitting behind the seats, and you can drive like that all day, every day. The other really amazing thing about this caravan park, or camping ground, or whatever it is, is that you can actually have an open fire. Now I say open, it's in a 44 gallon drum that's been chopped in half and re-soldered onto itself backwards. But it means that you can actually have an actual proper fire with proper wood. And we had an amazing fire that night and really enjoyed ourselves. So our original plan was to stay for two days, but as you'll see in a minute, disaster struck and that didn't kind of end up happening. What I haven't shown you yet, and I don't think is super evident in these videos, is the cooker and table and chairs and various other things that we used for camping this time around. And I'll be sure to do a separate quick video just showing you the other little bits and bobs that we use in case you're interested in copying the setup entirely, which would be weird, but you'll feel free to do it. And one of our friends had parked their car sideways on the hill with the sun setting in the background and they're like, hey, that looks like a car ad. And I'm like, hmm, like, no, it looks like a car ad. Go on. All right, then. Then I said, if I'm going to make a car ride out of your car, I'm going to use it as a tripod for my GoPro for some time lapse of the sun setting. Of course, then they wanted to move their car, so I had to shove it back onto the windshield, which is why you've got the view of this Jayco. Hashtag not a sponsor, but feel free, Jayco, for the rest of the time lapse sunset. Now, I did see some shots on the website of the sunset setting over the lake and over the caravan park, and they look pretty spectacular even on a mobile phone. So I thought, well, great opportunity for some photography. So we had a beautiful, clear sunset. There was almost no wind that night. The lake was like glass. The other thing that was interesting is that the lake was very, very much in low tide. So even though I was out off a boat ramp, there's no way you could have launched anything bigger than an inflatable kayak which also made me want an inflatable kayak. Because the lake was so calm and looking so awesome at sunset, that would have been a thing to behold. Next time, maybe. So how we did the tent this time was we had the beds in the back of the van and we had all our stuff in the tent itself. Now, I was concerned about insects. So we zipped up the awning that we had open out to the side. We zipped up the inner airlock uh, and we had the boot, the back hatch completely open and slept with our head in that direction. The van is slightly downhill, so if we slept the other way, then that would not have been very comfortable at all. But we found with those two zips that we had no insect problems whatsoever. Obviously, maybe if there was tons of mosquitoes or something like that, they would have still found a way to get in. But as it was, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't a super hot night, and we didn't get bitten. So in the morning, we had a fairly leisurely breakfast cooked on our little cooktop. We had eggs and toast and all sorts of yummy stuff which is really easy to cook and i um, very surprised actually at how well the cooker did. I will do that video on that, I promise. Then we're trying to think of what to do. Now it turns out that Ballarat was having its annual begonia festival and one of the people that we were with was interested in going. So we thought, why not? Roll the B-roll, Jimmy. There's still no Jimmy.
Well, that was a bit of a turn up. Uh, while we were looking at the beautiful flowers, um, we got a text message that all the tents had fallen down. There's a massive storm front coming and we all ran back. Thankfully, our tent actually held up reasonably well, which I'm fairly impressed by. I think we're gonna have to call this one short, which is a bit of a shame. There's more storm coming. Um, and we just literally had to throw everything that we had in the boot at a rapid rate. And, uh, well, I think it's worked out okay. Um, like I said, the, the tent stood up, so it was not too bad. But, uh, yeah, one night, I guess, is all we're getting this time around. So there's not much we can do about that. So we all jumped back in the cars, back in the van, raced back to the campsite. It turns out it was two of the tents, and ours had actually survived really, really well. I think part of the reason for that is that it's kind of fairly pointy, which means that it doesn't have a broad side in any direction facing the wind. But because two of our friends had set up their tents with their wide side facing down the hill and looking over the lake, as you would, when the wind gust came through, it pushed against that wide wall and bent the entire tent backwards. And because of the construction of their tents is the same as the construction of ours being metal on the outside, bendies on the top, it created such a bend on the top that the fiberglass ones, or whatever they're made of, on the top actually snapped and most of them pierced through the outer covering of the tent. So, ouch. So we thought, given that two out of the four tents were out of action, even though we could have stayed, we thought, let's call it quits. One night was a good test. And, you know, in solidarity with our friends that had now lost their tents, we just packed everything up and got out of there. Now, at the time, the reports were saying that there was still another massive storm inbound. So in a great hurry, I backed up to the tent, got the airlock open. We basically threw everything in the back of the van. But super thankful that the Remo Universal Tent 937 <laughs> held up really well and didn't actually get pierced. So that's about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification button. If you happen to live in the distant past in Japan, in one of those paper and tatami mat houses, don't boil oil inside, because that's apparently how they all burnt down. Didn't see that one coming. And next time you go in for a sit for the, on the toilet, try not taking your phone with you. It's really weird. Anyway, that's it for me for today. See you next time. Bye.